In just a moment, Suspense with Virginia Bruce and Robert Young. Hey, Mary, hmm? have you noticed there's a big dent in the left rear fender of our car? How'd it get there? What's that, dear? The dent in our rear fender. Oh, the dent? Oh, yes, of course. Well, dear, it's very simple. Yes. You see, I was going down to see Frank Martin. He's the Autolite salesman, you yes, know. Yes, yes, I know Frank better than you do. Well, Go you on. know the Autolite people, dear. They make those spark plugs you always talk about. Autolite resistor spark plugs, Mom. That's right. And Autolite makes stay full batteries, yes, too. Yes, and... I know. And Autolite makes complete ignition systems and over 400 other automotive, aviation, and marine products. But what about that dent? Uh, well, dear. Oh, oh, shh. Here's the Autolite show. Okay, okay, but I'm not licked yet. Suspense. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations bring you radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Starting tonight... Mr. Robert Young and Miss Virginia Bruce in Anton Leader's production of Celebration, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Just a couple more miles and I'll be there. I wonder how she is today. If there were only some way to get through to her, to make her understand. Well, I can't put it off any longer. For her sake. It's a big, wide, wonderful world. <laughs> I sang. Todd was coming for me. As I packed my suitcase, I looked out of the windows. The gardens were lovely. The patio with the peasant furniture. Some of the girls were playing badminton. Some were in the pool. Todd was coming for me, and I had a surprise for him. It's a big, wide, wonderful world. <laughs> oh, let's see, where's my pink bed jacket? Bottom drawer. It was here, I think. Well, where's the white one? Oh, dear. I couldn't seem to find anything, but I didn't care. Todd was coming for me. It's a big, wide, wonderful world. Mm -hmm. I knew what he'd say. Oh, Emily. Emily, how I've missed you. He'd hold me so hard and rub his cheek on my hair and kiss me. And I'd tell him about the surprise. I'd say... Mrs. Ward? Uh, yes? It's Mrs. Halleck. Oh, one moment, Mrs. Halleck. I pushed my suitcase under the bed. Come in, Mrs. Halleck. Your husband just phoned, Mrs. Ward. He'll be here soon. Oh, Todd, such a darling. Thank you, Mrs. Halleck. You've been so kind to me. Well, I try to be to all the ladies. I just have to put on my perfume. It's passionate night. Do you like it? Mm-hmm, grand. Oh, careful, you're spilling oh. it. Oh, I can't seem to hold things. Well, it didn't break. Stand back. I'll wipe it up. Oh, thanks. Heavens, I used to fill this dress out... And now I look like a scarecrow in it, don't I? You look grand. Now, you have everything. Your hat, gloves, purse. Oh, of course. Well, you remember last time you went for a drive? Last time? Oh. Uh, oh! Oh, I didn't see your suitcase. Well, I was just uh, packing it. I, I thought I wouldn't come back tonight. Well, did you want to get this bunch of letters in your suitcase, too? Of course. Give them to me. They're Todd's letters. Todd simply adores me, Mrs. Halleck. I'm sure he does. Just listen to this letter and you'll see. Darling, you are my happiness. I can't live without you. You're as necessary as... When I looked up, she was gone. She had left while I was reading. I knew what she'd do. She'd tell Todd I dropped that perfume... I think you should understand, Mr. Ward. I could hear her talking to Todd downstairs in the vestibule. I appreciate all you've done for her, Mrs. Halleck. As I told you in the letter, she would be better off in a place where she'd get uh, personal attention. <gasps> I'll take care of it. That woman, that two-faced... She came in and told me Todd was waiting downstairs. I danced down the stairs to Todd. Oh, Darling. Oh, Todd. Todd, 
<laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me, please. Oh, of course. Thank you. Emily, come here. Oh, Todd. Emily. Oh, Emily, how I've missed you. <laughs> Todd. You know, dear, today's an important day. Our eighth wedding anniversary. Why, Todd, we were married only six weeks ago. What? I mean, oh, I never can remember dates. <laughs> well, we're going to celebrate. Oh, Todd. Really celebrate this anniversary. We're going to all the places we used to go. The lake, Lover's Lane. Come on, darling, let's go. How can I tell her? What can I say? How can I do the things I must do? If only we could really turn back the clock. Back to before she fell down the stairs. Back to a time before the doctors told me about the pressure on her brain. The fact that any operation would prove fatal. If we only could go back to those wonderful days so long ago. And keep them forever. But there's no turning back the clock. Not ever. Mmm, smell those pines. Yes. Uh, Todd, didn't you wonder why I brought a suitcase? Well, yes, I did. That's because but... of the surprise. Surprise? Yes, I'm not going back to the club, Todd. I'm coming home with you. Wonderful, dear. But... I'm going to make chintz drapes for the living room and do the bathroom over with a full-length mirror and the kitchen lots of stunning color. Now and... you're talking. It'll be a big job, but we don't care, do we? Of course not, but let's... Celebrate first, huh? If she only could understand how much that home of ours meant to me. If only she knew how deeply it hurt to see her. To hear her now the way she has been ever since the accident. The way she must be as long as that pressure is on her brain. If only she could understand. Todd didn't want to go home. I saw the side of his face. He was looking straight ahead. A sad look. Closed up, sort of. Then we turned in at the lake and he cheered up. Look at that water, Emma. Yes. Have you ever seen anything so blue? No. Nothing is blue except your eyes. Oh, you darling flatterer. <laughs> well, here's our old parking place. Isn't it? Awfully quiet. You know, Emily, we could live a whole lifetime and never find anything better than we have right here. He opened the door. I'll get some blankets out of the back. I sat there while he went around to the back. I was alone again. People were always going away and leaving me alone. Oh, now, now, put a brave face on it, Emily. Powder your face and fix your lips. I opened my purse and groped around for my lipstick. Oh! Dear, I had wanted to spill like that. I reached down to pick up my things. Lipstick, compact. And my hand touched something. A little box. It was heavy. I read the words on the label. 38 caliber soft-nosed shells. Bullets! <laughs> For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Mr. Robert Young and Miss Virginia Bruce in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Dad, who's taking the hard knocks on this show, Emily or Todd? I don't know, Billy, but speaking of hard knocks, I still haven't gotten the lowdown from your mother on who, on the knocking about she gave the car. Say, here's Frank Martin. Now, Frank, uh, maybe you can tell me what happened to my car this morning. Well, what could happen to your car, Hap? You've got auto light resistor spark plugs, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, but I've got a big dent in the fender, too. Say, Mr. Martin, what does the word resistor mean? Well, it's like this, Billy. Autolite ignition engineered a 10,000-ohm resistor right into the auto light spark plug that permits a wider spark gap setting and maintains it far longer than in any other spark plugs. The auto light resistor spark plug is the best thing that's happened in spark plugs in years. A great new development of Autolite ignition engineers working with the country's leading car and truck manufacturers. When you replace your narrow gap spark plugs with the sensational new wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, you can tell the difference in your car. 
You get advantages like smooth idling and saving gas. And friends, right now you can buy Autolite resistor spark plugs anywhere in the United States. So don't delay. Get a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs now. But Frank, Mary, Billy, somebody, please tell me what happened to the fender of my car. Shh, quiet, Hap. Here comes suspense. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Robert Young and Miss Virginia Bruce in Celebration, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Everything was so lovely until I found that little box. I opened it, looked down at the bullets in it. What did Todd want with bullets? The box was only half full. I could hear Todd still rummaging around in the back of the car. I put the cover back on the box when I heard him coming around to the side. All set? I've got the blankets. I held the box of bullets under my purse. Come on, darling, let's get out on that beach. You lead the way. Okay, okay. I followed Todd three or four steps. And then I let the box slip out of my hand. Here we are. I'll uh, uh, spread the blankets. Come on, Emily, let's curl up and take it easy. Mm. Uh, thank you. Ah, look at that lake. Todd, um, what were you going to do with those bullets in the car? What bullets? <laughs> That imagination of yours... Oh, but I saw them, held them in my hands. The box was about half full. Come on, dear. Close to me, here. Todd, I'm sure Darling, I saw... Darling, please. Here, put your head on my shoulder. There. My head aches, Todd. Oh, rubbing's the thing. Oh, you're hurting me. I'm sorry, darling. Oh, no. no. Uh, something the matter? Oh, man. Yes. Uh, what do you want? I heard her cry as I was passing. Well, she's all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice car you got over there. Yes. Thought the missus wasn't feeling well. She's all right. Lonely place here, huh? Well, I'll be getting along. Where did he come from? I thought we were alone here. Alone? Oh, we, we have so few moments together, Emily. <sighs> I get so scared. I look it, don't I? Darling, why, when you came down the stairs today, you you were radiant. Was I? Was I really? You were beautiful. Why am I like that sometimes and sometimes... You were my life, Emily. Come here. Oh. Oh, Todd. Oh, you do want me. Mm. Kiss me again. Emily. Emily, in all the world, there could never be another woman like you. You've given me more happiness than... God. God, I dream of this. I, I live for it. Yes, but, Emily, I... Todd! Emily, listen to me. Todd, please! Darling, the doctor said... What doctor? You know, when you went to see the doctor... Oh, but that was ages ago. You all talk behind my back so I can't hear what you say. You and Mrs. Halleck. I just asked her how you were, and you must believe I love you, Emily. Oh. oh, I do. That's fine. Here's where we built the sand castle, remember? And the wave melted it. Oh, Todd, that day when I was caught in the undergrowth, undertow. But I pulled you out, dear. I was thinking, I keep dreaming about that. Sinking down into the black, and, and you not there. I'll be with you always, Emily. Let's Always. leave here, Todd. You said we'd go to all the places and celebrate. I mean, there'll be lots of people around. People? And... Yes, it'll be fun. We can have dinner at the inn. And... No, it'll be crowded, Emily, and... Uh, say... Oh, it's that man again. Uh, did you lose these things? What things? This box of bullets. Bullets? Found them in the sand, just a few steps from your car. Thought maybe you dropped them. I dropped them. See, I told you, Todd. Those are the bullets I found in the car. Is the box half full? Well, looks like somebody loaded a gun out of it. 38 caliber, soft nose shell, says on the box. Oh, I'll bet I know. I I let Ernie take the car yesterday. Ernie? Yeah, he's uh, gone in for target practice. <laughs> Who's Ernie? Why, uh, he's... Maybe he got them for you. Yeah, 
I figured they were yours, mister. Look like they'd just been dropped beside your car up there. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Well, Emily, if we're going to the inn, we'd better get started. That was too close. She nearly caught me. But it's too soon, too soon for her to know. I've got to be careful. But I can't wait too long. I have to cut the celebration short. You wait here, Emily. It's been so long since we were here. I'd better see what it's like. All right. I'll be back in a minute. I was alone again. Oh, relax, Emily. If Todd didn't come out in a minute, I'd go in after him. What I needed was a cigarette. I opened the glove compartment. Handkerchiefs, map, flashlight, gloves. No cigarettes. I pulled out an envelope. An envelope addressed to Todd at his office, marked personal. I unfolded the letter. Dear Mr. Ward, Dr. Kernitz today confirmed that Mrs. Ward's condition is becoming progressively worse, and she needs more personal attention than we can give her. And since we are not equipped to care for hypomanic patients, we request that you make other arrangements for her at your earliest convenience. Sincerely, Bertha Halleck. Mrs. Halleck! I threw the letter back in the glove compartment and slammed the door. This place is terrible. Is it? It's all run down. We'll uh, drive out into the country, find a quiet spot. Oh, no, Todd. Drive into town. We can have dinner at the hotel. There'll be music and we can dance. You know, excitement isn't good for you. Please, Todd. Please take me in. Anything the matter here, mister? Uh, No, no. My wife isn't feeling, doesn't feel well. Something wrong, lady? No, no. I'm all right. Oh, let's drive into the hotel, Todd. Oh, Okay. Isn't this wonderful, darling? Wonderful. Let's uh, drink to us, dear. To us? Mm -hmm. Oh, Todd, you do really mean it. More than anything in the world. Would you get the order now, sir? Yes. uh, What would you like, Emily? Roast beef? Southern fried chicken, lobster thermidor, duck with orange. Um, I'll have the southern fried chicken. Good. I'm afraid the chicken is all gone, madam. Oh, that's the one thing I want. Southern fried chicken and everything that goes with it. I'm sorry, madam. Well, maybe there's just one order left. I'll see what I can do. Uh, you, sir? Uh, lobster thermidor. Yes, sir. <laughs> A rumba. Shall we dance? Oh, yes, let's. Come on. The way your face lights up, darling. Being in your arms again. Oh. Just relax, dear. Oh, uh, oh excuse us, please. I'm sorry. Well, the music isn't right, and why is everybody bumping into Shh. us? Uh, let's let's go back to our table. All right. Oh, thank heaven. There was just one more order of chicken left, sir. I'll serve you in a moment. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Where's my purse? Right here, behind the flower bowl. And bulging full. (laughs) What have you got in there? Your letters. Oh, no. Yes, I read them over and over. You wrote this one from Omaha. Darling, you are my happiness. I can't live without Uh, you. You are as necessary as the air I breathe. Emily, people are listening. Uh, Better... Give me those letters. No, but they're mine. You wrote them to me. Of course, Emily. Did you mean I... what you said in them? Certainly I do. Only please quiet down here. Oh, that awful music. Those lights. Emily, here's the uh, waiter with our food. Oh. May I serve you, madame? Um, what's that? Fried chicken. Oh, Todd, you know I never eat anything fried. But the lady insisted, sir. Southern fried chicken and everything that goes with it. Well, take take it away. I'll pay for it. Yes, sir. Oh, maybe this once won't hurt. Very good. Here you are, madame. The lobster, sir? Uh, thank you. Not very appetizing chicken, is it? Why not try it? 
Go ahead, darling. Mm. Oh, there's no taste to it. Why are all these people making so much noise? Don, take me home. I, I'm not hungry. I, I want to go home. Emily, we sublet our house three months ago. Don't you remember when you... When I... Darling, we have no... Emily, dear, you must realize that we no longer have a place. Todd was talking, but I couldn't seem to hear what he was saying. Inside, I, I was all stirred up. The best thing we can do is, is get out of here. Come on, darling. We got up and left. Got into our car out on the parking lot. Where are those keys? Let's see, I... Todd, are you taking me home? We're going out where we can be together, alone. To our lover's lane, remember? Where it's quiet and peaceful. No, 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 Todd, I, I want to go home. This is our eighth wedding anniversary, Emily. We're celebrating. Oh, Todd. Where are those keys? Well, uh, maybe they're in your top coat in the back seat. No, no, maybe. they're not there. What makes your coat so heavy? Oh. What are you doing with a revolver? Give it to me. I'll put it in my pocket so it... Oh, here are my keys. Todd, those bullets were... Emily, please. Now I see what you... Now I know. Yes, now she knows. And there's no time to lose. I've got to drive fast, get there and do it. Only she could understand. Understand that it will be better this way. Better for both of us. <laughs> Emily. Try not to get so excited. But those bullets. You said they were Ernie's. Who's Ernie? Half an hour ago, I told you I loved you. Remember? Yes, I know you did, but... Well, I do. I love you more than living. Why are you slowing down? Here's our lover's lane. You used to call it our paradise, remember? It's so, so, so dark now. Here's our magic circle under our big tree. Todd, you're... Come, you're... darling. Come into my arms. There. You do love me. You do want to be with me, don't you? Forever, Emily. The one way we can be together forever, dear, is... No, no. No, Todd. Put that gun down. I want to live with you. I have to tell you, darling... Listen carefully. You're not well, Emily. You're never going to be well again. Oh, yes, I will, Todd. Yes, I, I will. I'll, I'll be a real wife to you. I'll be everything you want me to be. I'll I can't be stand living without you. We'll go together. Together? Yes. Now, rest against me, sweetheart. <laughs> Close your eyes. There. Will it hurt my Todd? Only an instant, dear. Oh, the gun is so cold on my temple. Quiet now. I'll be with you in a moment. No, no, take it away. Emily, you let's kill go. me and leave me let alone. Go. Don't, I promise God, you, I don't. I won't you kill you. I didn't. Stop. I won't go through with God, it. Emily, God. stop it. Stop it, Emily. <laughs> Slowly, I became aware of pain in my head. There was a smell, like a hospital. I fought to remember what had happened. I... I'd fallen downstairs. Oh, no, that had been a long time ago. There was a gun, Todd and I struggling. That was it. Then I heard Todd talking. Doctor, I... I want to tell you what happened. You I see... think I know, Mr. Ward. Your wife suffered a head injury some time ago, which caused the bone to press on the frontal lobe of her brain, causing acute hypomania. Isn't that right? Yes, but I used to see... I've seen many people, Mr. Ward, whose loved ones faced a living death, so I can imagine your thoughts. Yes, but you must understand, I meant to end it. Mm -hmm. For both of us. But when the time came, I couldn't. I, I just couldn't. Well, what happened was an accident. A very fortunate accident, because the bullet which uh, struck your wife's head tonight did what medical science could not do. Huh? The operations necessary to remove the bullet served two purposes, and your speed in getting her here saved both her life and her sanity. She'll... 
She'll be all right. Uh, after a couple of weeks of rest. And your wife is no longer a hypomanic, Mr. Ward. If I were you, I'd give thanks to whatever fate guided that bullet along the course it took. Right then, I knew that everything was wonderful. Even the pain in my head. And Todd was by my side, bending over me. Emily. Oh, Todd. Emily, darling. Can... Can you ever forgive me? Forgive you, darling? After what the doctor said? Oh, Todd. I just couldn't live without you. I wanted us always to be together. And now we will be. Darling, isn't this our eighth wedding anniversary? Yeah. Well, then, let's celebrate. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Young and Virginia Bruce, for such splendid performances tonight. Our stars will return in just a moment. What a show! What a wallop before that happy ending. Yeah, but I still want to know who walloped my fender. Your fender hat? Yeah. Oh, that. Well, one of the boys brushed your car when he was turning around after the lodge meeting last night. Well, I'll be... I give up, Frank. Go on. Here's an important message for Autolite spark plug dealers everywhere. When you install the new Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, set the spark plug gap at .040 for all cars. Let me repeat. Set the spark plug gap at .040 for all cars. And friends, get a set of the new Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs tomorrow if you want the improved operating performance and gas saving that Autolite resistor spark plugs have already given millions of car owners. Don't delay. Get a set of new Autolite resistor spark plugs right away. And remember, Autolite means spark plugs. Ignition engineered resistor spark plugs. Autolite means batteries. Stay full batteries. Autolite means ignition systems. The lifeline of your car. In its 26 nationwide plants, Autolite manufactures bumpers, die castings, horns, instruments and gauges, lights, ornamental plastics, and more than 400 other automotive, aviation, and marine products. All are famous the world over for their Autolite engineered dependability. And now, here is Mr. Robert Young. It's been a pleasure to appear again on Suspense, and doubly a pleasure when it meant co-starring with beautiful Virginia Bruce. Thank you, Bob. It's been a pleasure for me, too. But there's another pleasure I'm looking forward to, hearing next week's suspense. We all are. Because next week, Edward G. Robinson will star in an unusual story called The Man Who Wanted to Be Edward G. Robinson. Another gripping study in... Suspense. Virginia Bruce may soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Night Has a Thousand Eyes. And Robert Young appears soon in his latest RKO production, Baltimore Escapade. Tonight's suspense play was written by Phyllis Parker and Arnold Marquis, with music composed by Lucian Morawick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leder. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such stars as Ray Milland, William Powell, Lucille Ball, John Garfield, and many others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear Edward G. Robinson in The Man Who Wanted to Be Edward G. Robinson. This is the Autolite Suspense Show. Drive as if your life depends on it. It does. Good night. Switch to Autolite. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>